you can spend so much time, so much money, so many resources preparing for a launch and then you launch and don't nobody like your business. What's up beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Erin and this is Erin On Demand, a place for entrepreneurs and content creators looking to build your brand, business, and impact. And today, we are talking about starting a business in 2020. And I know it's been a crazy year and I think that the way that we look at business is shifting a bit because of the times that we're currently going through. And I think that this time is going to be the birth of a lot of really innovative businesses because you're going to start thinking about business completely different than we did even you know last year. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some ways to kind of go about business in 2020. At least this is what I would do if I was starting a business this year. The first thing is to find a tribe of people with a diverse skill set. Do not feel like you need to start this business all by yourself. And I think a lot of times when we go into entrepreneurship, we're just thinking like, I want to be the owner and this and, you know, be the boss lady or a man. And you're not thinking about yourself more objectively and what you actually have to offer. So if you are trying to create a handbag and have no idea how to manufacture products or how to even design products, you have this cool idea, but you don't really know how you're going to take it from an idea to an actual business or a product for that matter, I would team up with someone who maybe specializes in merchandising or in design. I would just make sure that you are looking at exactly what you offer and figuring out who can I pull in to make sure that I am covering all bases because the last thing you wanna do is start an idea and you're gonna spend so much time, so much money, so much energy, pouring into this area that you are very unfamiliar with when you could onboard somebody, not as a staff, but as someone who is a co-founder or who has another founder or C-suite position that can really help you get the business off the ground. So I would definitely say now you can save a lot and gain a lot by partnering with people. And this is not just for 2020, but anytime you are starting a business I think that you have to look at yourself completely from an objective standpoint and say okay where may I have some holes and how can we fill those holes and maybe that comes in the form of bringing somebody else in to help you co-found your business the second thing is to think of your digital approach First, a lot of businesses right now are really struggling because they don't have an online revenue stream. Um, and, you know, it's really hard to kind of have a certain like primary stream of income. And now that's taken away. And how can you kind of shift this into getting people to engage with your business online? Taking an online approach first is the most important thing that you could do for your business moving forward. I've seen a lot of hairstylists selling hair kits from different products that they may use on their clients and pairing that with a tutorial um, that that's kind of like a bundle for maybe the type of styling or the type of treatment that their clients typically get. I've also seen different photographers taking digital photos of their clients, like literally having Zoom photo shoots and editing pictures. Like you can send a selfie into a photographer and they will edit it for a fee. So there are ways that you can get creative and I think now is the time to think, okay, if I wanted to start a business right now, how can I monetize this in an online form so that way I can create streams of income without even being in front of other people? Another example of kind of automating your business more digitally is a restaurant that I love. They have a wine club attached to their restaurant and I have a membership. It is a monthly fee of like $20 a month and you get a bottle of wine every month and I'm sure that they are thriving and really sustaining off of this membership this wine membership because people can't come into the restaurant and eat and imagine if they didn't have that and they only were able to offer a takeout 
a lot of businesses are suffering because they don't have diverse streams of revenue that don't necessarily rely on people you know coming in to partake in your service so moving forward thinking about your business in multiple ways especially online and kind of letting that be the ring leader moving forward the next thing is to test your business before you launch you can spend so much time so much money so many resources preparing for a launch and then you launch and don't nobody like your business or nobody invest in it or nobody buys what you're what you're selling and so you want to test it out if you are starting a clothing line how can you get some samples of that and put it on people and see are people responding to this or if you do have an app maybe create an instagram for the app and create a landing page for it before you hire an app developer and see is this even something people are clicking on or is it generating traffic are people submitting their emails are people even showing interest i think that it is extremely extremely important right now to vet your business before you go full force with investing tons of money time and energy into it and also when you're testing things out stir up conversation get people talking figure out what problem you're solving for them and use those triggers as ways to start conversations so that your audience feels like this product or this service or this whatever is really going to help me and I know that I will get value out of it just because I can already tell um, from these mental triggers that is something that I would like to partake. The next thing is make media a priority. And a lot of times we just kind of let our social media go or we don't invest in paying for advertising or we just completely neglect the marketing of our business. And I think that that needs to be one of the first things you consider when you sit down and you think about how your business is going to go. And the marketing part is probably the most important because because if people don't know about your business, you're not going to make money. So you want to make sure that you prioritize media. If you have no idea how to talk on camera or how to send a tweet or how to do any type of social media, I would definitely say you need to be vetted in that and understand the psychology of your audience. What are they thinking? What are they looking for? And really start to try to etch out how you're going to tackle your marketing strategy. And this is a big tip that Gary V is always preaching is just getting in front of your audience because that repetition is what's going to cause them to convert. So making sure that you are prioritizing media quality and honestly I say if it is 2020 and you are not incorporating video into your marketing strategy what are you doing you definitely need to be using video whether that's Instagram videos Instagram stories uh, YouTube anything going live you need to be incorporating video into your strategy because one video can convert people so much faster than even one blog post one podcast one Facebook or Instagram post if someone can sit through even one five-minute video they may go through the whole no like and trust factor um, which is a huge marketing factor it's like the principle of marketing getting to know someone growing to like them and then becoming trusting of them so you want to take them through that process and video is the fastest way to get them there that is when you can sell to them once they get out of the no like trust phase so once they trust you they buy and video you guys please include video in your marketing when you are launching a business this year or even if you've already launched do some video and my next tip is to start simple. Do not overwhelm your audience with a ton of stuff, um, a ton of products that you're releasing, even if you're releasing like an online clothing boutique. Start with one product, one color, one saying, one option so that people, you know, maybe this is your flagship option. And for us, I have another business called Black and Gold. It's spelled G-O-A-L-D and it's all about just pursuing your goals relentlessly. And when we first launched 
we had thought of all of these cool ideas for black and gold, but I was like, no, we are releasing one design first because we are not giving people the option. And so we did one color of our classic, and that is the one that everyone knows us for. That's the one that everyone still wants, no matter how many designs we release. But the thing is, when you start with one, you only give people one option. When you start with 10, you give them the choice. And so they may say, well, I like the cream version better than all of the others so they only buy one and now they may not come back for another sale when you start with one thing one problem you're solving one shirt you're designing one app you're developing with one main feature one aspect of your coaching like one service that is your flagship service when you start with one that is really how you get to upsell people because now once you kind of establish that you release something else so now you know three months later after we have been selling the main design people started asking well what what else do y'all have like i want to buy something else so we released another design and a lot of the people who bought the first design bought the second design and they still continue to support us because we don't overwhelm them we release one thing at a time and sometimes something so simple can make such a big difference in your sales. So even when you're looking at it from a service perspective or a product perspective, try not to have too many options for people when you start your business. Give one main thing that you are driving them to constantly from all of your platforms. You're driving them to one thing because it's going to help create clarity around your brand, and it's going to help convert people into actual paying customers or clients. Now, I wanted to do this video because my business really hasn't been impacted severely by everything that's going on right now. And I think that's strongly because everything I do is online. And so it has really given me an opportunity to help other people um, figure out how to go about managing and shifting, maybe shifting some of the gears in their business to be more digitally friendly and monetize in ways that maybe you didn't think of doing before. So if you are interested in booking a strategy call with me to figure out like how can I tackle this business in 2020, um, you are welcome to do that. I will leave all of the information in the description box below. I just wanna end with the fact that in the last recession, in 2008-2009, that's when a lot of huge businesses were built. I just want people to know that this is a good time. You know, this is a great time to now be creative and kind of recession-proof your business if you launch it right now. I think you do have an advantage of thinking of ways that you can monetize your business to be able to withstand times like this. So don't let this scare you from starting your business. Let this motivate you and honestly, let this inspire you to think of some creative ways to roll out your business and maybe to generate some streams of income that you wouldn't have thought of had this not happened. So I love you guys. I hope this was encouraging for you. In the comments, I want to know what kind of business are you starting in 2020? And if you want to be a part of my internet home, all you have to do is subscribe. I would love to have you here. I upload every Wednesday and most Sundays and we talk all about entrepreneurship, social media, and just living and owning your life. So if that's what you're interested in, welcome. And I will see you guys on the next one. Love ya.